So we sing like, you can see my light. And then we go, en français, tu pouvoir ma lumière. ma lumière, tu pouvoir ma lumière. ma lumière. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Alexandra and today's a very exciting video because Team AG goes abroad for the first time ever. When I say abroad, I just mean a hop, skip and jump away to Montreal, but it felt like being abroad to us. Oui, oui, oui. Let's get started. So if you are a consistent viewer of this channel, you probably know and love my video editor, James. James is a fan fave, and I don't blame all of you. James is pretty great. James and I go way back. We used to work at Chatelaine Magazine together, and sadly for us, he recently moved to Montreal. But don't worry, he's still editing my videos, and he's just living and working remotely. So obviously when we found out James was moving, we were like, okay, we have to do a makeover in his space. And I thought it would be so fun to surprise him, take a little Team AG trip. We realized that we would have to obviously send James product. We would have to get measurements from him. We knew that we were going to have to tell him that we were doing a makeover. So the story we told him is that Graham would be coming to Montreal with all his tools and supplies and that James and Graham would be filming the makeover together. Kind of like one of the virtual makeovers I've done in the past where I send all the product and then the person executes it and films the process. Little does James know though, almost all of Team AG is coming to Montreal doing this makeover for him. He gets a few days off and he gets to just come back to a beautifully styled and DIY'd space. This has been months in the making, months of calls telling this elaborate story about this makeover to James. I can't believe the video's finally here and we are pulling off this surprise. But first things first, I have to actually plan this makeover. So I'm going to hop on a call with James and just establish what he wants in this space and what's working and what's not. Hey guys, so I am about to hop on a call with James this morning in the shower, was like telling myself, I'm like, you're not giving away that we're going to Montreal. We're not going to Montreal. We're not going to Montreal. Just Graham is going to Montreal. We have had to like in our calendars put James makeover with Graham. Like even when we're talking about it on set when James isn't there, we have to delete the clip so that when we show up at his door, he's just gonna be like, sorry. Sorry, what? Quick cue, when are you uploading this? Cause like, is he gonna have access to this? I know, I was wondering that. He will, he does not, he doesn't care what we're doing. Yeah. He doesn't care who, he only cares about the immediate thing he's working on. Drag me. <laughs> Drag me. Okay, I'm gonna get on the call with James and ask him all of my preliminary questions. Hi, Gator. <laughs> We meet again for another room makeover. Gosh, another one. <laughs> <laughs> By now, the viewers know that you have moved to Montreal. And the fun thing about this makeover is that we are doing it virtually. So you are going to have to be handy for a couple days. <laughs> Good luck with that. We're sending in Graham as some reinforcements to help you, but you are going to be vlogging this makeover trying your hand at being handy and trying. keyword <laughs> it's gonna be really fun Yay. are you ready for the challenge i'm not ready for the challenge but it's gonna happen and it's gonna be exciting so <laughs> <laughs> i feel like maybe you should just talk about why you chose to move to montreal because i'm sure that the viewers are wanting to know I am redacted age now and I'm like, I want my own space and like working in home decor. I'm like, I want my own space. I want to make it cute. I want to make, you know what I mean? Yeah. I want to like settle. And Toronto is just completely unaffordable for a single human being to yeah. afford rent. We were actually just talking about this. I think a lot of people who watch my channel are from the States or they just come from places where rent is not as expensive as it is in Toronto, but it's a huge issue unbelievable. It just kind of happened across my plate. And I was like, you know what? This feels like the universe giving me a little nudge. And luckily I work at a job that I can sit at a computer anywhere. So I was like, why the heck not? Also for those of you watching who don't know this, Montreal, at least I would say, at least to like 
the people of Toronto. It feels very European and especially like mm -hmm. the real estate in Montreal. Mm -hmm. You can get so much more character and like charm in your apartments. Mm -hmm. Lead in yes. to my apartment. It's <laughs> so beautiful. It's like grandma chic, cottage core, all yeah. the things. <laughs> Which is funny because I was looking at your info and your info is so colorful, so like maximalist. My dream home was always like Florence Welch's house, yeah. which is just like, you know, like you walk into a room and you can barely see the wall. Not cluttered, but like filled with things and texture. And mm -hmm. can you talk me through what's working in your space now, what you need? Like just kind of walk me through the whole, the whole space. The character of the space is like- It's so stunning. You know, molding around the ceiling, these gorgeous chandeliers that my landlords, they're like antique finders or whatever. So all of the chandeliers in the apartment are all made by them. This like inlaid shelving unit, which is gorgeous. Also the lighting in this room is so, so, so stunning. The landlords also left me this avocado tree, which they planted 10 years ago. I'm obsessed with it. It's so quirky and I actually think it really matches but it really needs to be a multi-purpose space. Obviously it needs to be a living room of sorts. It also needs to be a workspace for me because I made the decision to work from home for the rest of my life. And somewhere where I can sit and eat dinner myself, but also I would love to like host some people and have that as well. Who do I know who could help me with that? It's like <laughs> three spaces in one, really. Yeah. I've got the vision. You can see yeah. it all coming together. One of us has to. Yeah. <laughs> Except that you actually have to do the work. So. <laughs> Me and Graham, me and Graham, me and you Graham. And Graham. I'm yeah. gonna be in the like, can you use the drill for me? <laughs> I'm super excited to plan this space and just like bring it to, well, you're bringing it to life, but I can't wait to see you bring it to life. <laughs> um, Same, sis, okay? <laughs> okay, well, thanks, James. It's pretty clear that he wants this kind of mismatch of styles. He wants to embrace the kind of cottage core vibe of the apartment itself, but he also really wants to embrace a lot of maximalist elements, color, pattern, texture. James really loves thrifting. He has a ton, I was gonna call them tchotchkes. Actually, no, they are tchotchkes. He loves to just pick up baskets, art pieces, lamps. He has like a million little tiny vintage things he's collected along his travels. Okay, so let's take a look at the mood board. In my mind, James's space is gonna be divided into three separate areas. We're gonna have the office space, the living area, and the dining area. So in the office space, I'm gonna keep the existing desk slash table situation he already has. I really want to use this wallpaper from Bell Art Studios to not only divide his office space from the rest of the room, but add that hit of color and pattern that was so prevalent in his inspo images. Moving on to the living room space, I want to bring in a full size sofa because he also had mentioned that he might want to have guests over and just have a space for them to sleep. So it's gonna be tight in this living area but I think we can move around some furniture that he brought with him from Toronto and just like maximize the space as much as possible. This pink rug brings in that kind of vintage element that he loves, but also complements the gold sofa so well. I'm gonna pass on this inspo photo to Graham and have him custom make a glass coffee table. I'm thinking we can thrift the glass top and then Graham can make the bottom two pieces with some scrap wood we have. I wanna paint it in a fun lilac color to kind of match the wallpaper. We're just leaning into these yellows, purples, and pinks. You'll notice that there's also a picture of all of James's art. He has collected such beautiful art pieces. I remember that from the makeover we did of his Toronto bedroom. And I really want to use all of his pieces to create a really cool gallery wall. He recently invested in a frame TV. I may have influenced him. And I wanna just build a gallery wall around this TV, adding in things like air plants, baskets he's collected, little plates that he has. Just really lean into the like eclectic feel of it all. Moving on to the dining room area. I think that there's room to put some kind of vintage table. I have a very clear image in my mind of what I want this table to look like. I think we're gonna have to thrift it, but I want it to be cottagey and homey and warm. And I'm thinking we will add some extra folding chairs on the wall. So I wanna kind of create this like art piece on the wall with hooks and then folding chairs that he can hang up and store, but also create this kind of like 3D art installation that looks cool when the chairs aren't in use. 
Okay, so now it's time to source products, have them sent to Montreal. Graham is going to be DIYing here in Toronto, bringing everything with him in a U-Haul. We just gotta get this makeover happening and also keep it a secret from James at the same time. Okay, so it is Tuesday morning. Graham, Alana, and I have our weekly DIY meeting. Graham, he has found a table on the side of the road that we think would be perfect for James's apartment. We're gonna go on a noble quest to find it. What if it's gone? I hope it's not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go. Alana was looking on Facebook Marketplace the other day, and this is basically what I was thinking about. I think that I manifested this table. Here it is. Yeah, it's perfect. It's, like tiny too, like it's so good. <gasps> Amazing. Yeah. And then we put another leaf in there. This is what the wood looks like underneath. So if we strip it, it'll probably be something like that. Someone stained this too. You can see like the brush marks. Okay, wow, this is amazing. Great find, Graham. Thanks. It's always satisfying finding free stuff. <laughs> You guys just missed like the funniest traffic jam ever. Ooh, okay, but wait for it. Okay. Oh. It extends. Wow. Oh, there's a bug crawling on it, Graham. Oh, oh it's an ant. Oh my god, look at your outfit. It's very AG, right? <gasps> So once we secured the table, Graham brought it back to his workshop and he just worked on this table a lot. He was so proud of it. He sanded it down. He added a glossy coat, so it's like super shiny. He's like, I can see my reflection in this table. This piece looks like brand spanking new. Ram. <laughs> okay, let's head to Montreal. We're about to take off. Here we come, James. <laughs> Hey guys, today's the day. We're gonna surprise James. Graham left about 15 minutes ago to go to James's home. James knows Graham is coming, but little does he know we've been here for, you know, 24 hours. We've gotten tattoos. We've eaten really good food. We went to this cool cocktail club. Like it's all happened and he has no idea. Okay, I'm jealous. So the four of us are gonna head over now. We're gonna knock on the door and surprise him. Three cameras I'm recording. <laughs> I have like full on butterflies, like I could puke. It's here, it's here, it's here. It's here. This one. Hi! What the f? <laughs> what the f? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> you <laughs> what the f? Oh my god! I'm gonna have to bleep out all of this. Hey, <laughs> MTV! <laughs> Now you see why I moved to Montreal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Holy shit. James texted me twice. And yeah. I was like, what's going on? Hi. Oh, what the heck? Did you really think we would trust you to make over your space? 
With your nails? I was like, do you want to go get the car? Do you want to like, he was like, mm, no. no. I was like, I could really use a coffee. Yes! <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I'll make you one in the kitchen. <laughs> I truly can't believe we pulled that surprise off, especially because James is the biggest detective ever. Apparently he like kind of maybe thought it was a possibility and was like checking all of our social media the day before, but he was genuinely surprised and it was just, it was so fun. I also filmed a vlog of shopping in Montreal, just our time spent here for the week. So make sure you check that out. It's going live next Wednesday. Gotta go, you've been here for way okay. too long. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye. 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 Okay, let's get this makeover started. Okay guys, this is the living room. I've never said this, I don't think, but it's actually bigger in person than it is in photos. So we have a lot of space to work with. James's desk is here right now. I don't love it here. I think it's, sorry James, a weird choice. <laughs> there is a closet behind here. He has tons of storage, which is great, but the door is blocked. Like you don't have like easy access to it with the desk here. So I think we're gonna move it onto this wall, his little record station area, which is so cute. I think we're just gonna flip these two areas. This cabinet is so beautiful. James right now has all his books in here. If you guys didn't know, he's an avid reader. He has a book club called Gay Rights. Gay Rights, 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 Gay Rights. Gay rights, gay rights. I think we're gonna take the doors off of these and just have this all open. He has storage to put the doors. We're not gonna get rid of them. We're gonna put them away in the closet. But then all his books are on display and we're like really leaning into the color. And then I want to put all of his records here. So they're nicely on display and we can free up some floor space cause there's like records kind of everywhere right now, but I wanna corral them in this place. Moving on to this side. This sofa he thrifted when he got here and he's giving it to a friend. So we're gonna load it into the U-Haul and deliver it. Cause apparently we are also a moving company. No shade intended. Should we start a moving company? Me and you, G and A? No. No, we have a U-Haul. We're like, of course, we'll deliver it to James's friends. So we're gonna bring in a brand new one. So excited about that. And then this wall is going to be a massive gallery wall. James recently got the frame TV and we are gonna mount it on the wall so it looks like it's part of the gallery wall. We're gonna get rid of this cabinet. This we're gonna get rid of. It's like an old Ikea unit because we're moving all of the records into that cabinet. Oh, and I forgot where Carla's standing. This is going to be his dining room. This space is definitely big enough to have a dining table. It is going here. Okay, I guess we're just gonna start moving stuff out and uh, prepping the space. Oh my gosh, cassettes. How retro and cool. The gang's all here. My office is so The first thing we're gonna be doing is wallpapering this wall for a pop of color. We found this wallpaper on Bell Art Studios. You guys know I just love Bell Art. I feel like every wallpaper they have is so James. It's like bright and colorful, very maximalist. The issue is that their wallpaper isn't peel and stick. And James had asked his landlords, can we wallpaper, like permanent wallpaper? And they said no, which I totally understand. It's a rental. So I'm sure you guys have seen all over DIY TikTok, people using this contact paper to paint over if they can't paint their walls in their rentals. We are doing something similar, but with wallpaper. We are going to be putting this peel and stick contact paper on the wall and then wallpapering with wallpaper glue on top of the contact paper. So we're basically turning it into peel and stick. Amazing. Alana and I actually looked for alternatives that were peel and stick, but nothing was as good as this wallpaper. So that's why we're going like so far <laughs> to make this wallpaper happen because it's meant to be in the space. Yeah, nice frame. Oh, yes, yes, boy. yes, yeah. Just like painting, you wanna make sure you prep your wall, that you just clean it with a damp cloth so there's no dust, and that way this paper will go on like super, super smooth. If you wanna go the extra mile, you could use, is it rubbing alcohol though? I, I think it's different. Isopopo? Isopopo? <laughs> Isopopo. Isopopo. Isopopo? Are you guys okay? 
The contact paper is up. You can't even tell that we've covered the wall with this. Like it's super thin, really great base. And then it just peels off as I mentioned. So when James leaves, he can just peel the wallpaper off like you would regular peel and stick wallpaper. The next step is going to be using wallpaper paste. We're gonna slap it on the wall and then get the paper hung. So the key I find to using wallpaper that is pasted is using lots of glue. You don't wanna be shy with the glue and I'm just using a paint roller. <gasps> Did I break it? Adding wallpaper glue is basically the same as painting a wall and just like slap it on. Okay. Don't be afraid of it. It's very forgiving and allows you to kind of move the paper around until you get the perfect placement. It doesn't dry right away, so it gives you a chance to kind of move it around and line everything up. Okay, first panel's up. Numero de panel. You want to get the paste as close to the next panel as possible, but you don't want to put glue on the panel of wallpaper or it'll show. If you do end up getting a little bit of paste on a panel, you just wanna use a damp rag and rub it off. I'm pointing here because there's a little bit. You just wanna make sure your glue doesn't dry or then there's like no getting it off the panel and it'll show. Magic. Okay, Graham, you wanna start the next panel? Oh, yeah. So for the coffee table, I found this image on Pinterest and I fell in love with the shapes. I thought it would work so well with that kind of maximalist style we're going for in James's space. So I enlisted Graham to DIY it. Graham is creating two shapes, a cylinder shape and then this kind of cool organic wavy shape. These are gonna be the legs of the table. So to start, Graham is building the cylinder and he's taking a piece of hobby board and using his table saw, he's cutting it into strips at the height we determined we wanted this coffee table to sit. The key to this DIY is that Graham cut all of these pieces on an angle to create a trapezoid shape. This is gonna allow all the pieces to butt up against each other and sit flush to create a perfect circle. Next, Graham is attaching all the pieces together with wood glue and nails. Once it is dry, he's sanding everything down so it's a perfect cylinder. Graham added a bottom piece to the cylinder and then proceeded to pour in concrete to make the table leg sturdy. For the next leg, the organic shaped one, he did the exact same process, except instead of creating a perfect circle, he created this organic wavy shape similar to the wallpaper. The trapezoid shape makes it so that when you alternate the pieces, it allows you to curve in and out to create that organic wavy shape. He's adding a bottom, just like with the other piece, some concrete. You could also use sand, gravel, or stones. Now Graham is adding a top with some wood glue and nails, and he's giving the whole cylinder a really good prime. He's priming it twice to make sure everything is nice and smooth. I know people have been asking for DIY instructions, guides you can follow. This is so exciting for us as a team. We are working on it. I am working on getting my blog up and running so that you will be able to access these instructions after a video goes live. So make sure you are following alexandragator.com, following my Instagram, because once we launch that, I will definitely announce it on IG. Okay, so got our cylinder base here. I've decided to paint it raspberry ice, which is the color we used in Alessandra's studio apartment and her closet doors. Since we have a raspberry ice kind of color on the wallpaper, I wanted it to be wallpaper and then the base of the coffee table, a similar color. You'll see the vision come to life. 
Just like with Alessandra's closet doors, you're not gonna be able to see the color until we do the second or third coat. I can see it, but yeah, it's pretty light when you do the first coat. I want this color. For the wall beside the sofa, I went back and forth about what I wanted to do here. First I was thinking maybe shelves, maybe more art, but then I thought because this is such a small, narrow space and because James has so many windows, why not put a large mirror on this wall? I think it's gonna be perfect to bounce light off of, make use of all that natural light pouring through those windows. So I once again enlisted Graham to make a custom DIY piece. He is recreating that wavy mirror that is all over social media right now and here's how he did it. For this DIY, you're going to want to use plywood. Graham used hobby board and although it worked, it was really flimsy to work with and actually broke on him a couple times in the process. So to get that curvy shape, Graham is using a bowl and just tracing the outside of it with a pencil and then going in and freehanding it to connect all of the little curves. Graham is now using a jigsaw to cut out the template. He's sanding and then priming the whole thing. And he's gluing the two pieces together with wood glue. It broke. Yeah. And then I tried gluing it and then it just broke again. So I, I put doweling in across here. You did it. Yeah, in like here too. No, he's so smart. Okay, so here's our wavy mirror frame. I have been on a mission to reuse paint colors that we have in the studio because we have like 50 cans of paint and I'm painting it sulking room pink, which is the kind of mauvey color we used in Taylor's reading nook. I think it's just gonna make such a statement on that wall right when you walk into this room. So for the extra dining room chairs, I knew I wanted to have an eclectic mix of color within the chairs. I didn't want them to all match. So we thrifted these folding chairs on Facebook Marketplace. They were really inexpensive and I'm just going in with some spray paint primer, letting it dry and now I'm spraying one of them a mint green and one of them this fun coral pink color. And look at that, some custom spray painted chairs. It's like 4 p.m., 4.30. This wallpaper looked incredible when we put it up. There was no gaps in the paper. It all looked seamless. And it started to peel off the wall. So TikTok failed me for this one. I've used contact paper on countertops, made specifically for countertops. Works. Oh. <laughs> Graham. <gasps> this place is haunted. Oh my God, what? Do we see what's happening here? Yeah, that's though? actually kind of freaky. I just think the contact paper does not want to adhere to this wall. Like it's just, the wall's rejecting it basically. This is not a wallpaper problem, it's a contact paper problem. It's also really humid in Montreal, it's been raining. It could just be a combination of things, but we're gonna problem solve. We're gonna figure it out, we're gonna problem solve, but wanted to be transparent with you. DIY is a process and sometimes these things happen. Sucks when we're on a time crunch in, you know, Montreal, but we're gonna fix it. It's gonna be great. The panel has officially fallen off the wall. <laughs> the entire thing. It's like 5 p.m. and we're revealing the space tomorrow. The drama. So, we are going to clean the wall again with alcohol, rubbing alcohol, isopopo. We are going to put a fresh new piece of contact paper up. The one Graham just got is a vinyl, it's like glossy. We took the contact paper off of the wallpaper. So we're just scrapping the old contact paper and sticking the wallpaper directly onto the new contact paper with wallpaper glue and adhesive. You know what? I'm gonna take this contact paper back to Home Depot and I'm gonna- <laughs> I'm gonna bring it back, I'm gonna say I was not pleased. Do you have a manager I could speak to? We're going into the top with wallpaper glue, just so that we can still move the paper around, get it lined up in the correct spot. And then we're going in with this 3M super multi-purpose adhesive, which is basically like a spray adhesive. And that's how we are making sure that this wallpaper stays on the contact paper. I may have just cried. 
but like a happy cry. I can't quite believe it, but it's working. The adhesive is also kind of tacky, so you can still kind of pull the paper up if you need to, but it's definitely stuck on there. The good news is that the contact paper really does come off the wall, as we saw earlier today, so it is renter friendly. It's just like getting it to stick is the problem. I think that was the biggest problem solve we've done in a very long time. If we all got here tomorrow and it's fallen down, game, game over. <sighs> Hi. <laughs> this is the situation. I walked in to James's before the rest of the team and I had this whole thing in my head planned about how I was gonna be like, oh no, the wallpaper fell and everyone was gonna be really sad. And then they were gonna come into the living room and it was actually gonna be intact on the wall. I guess it's karma because, so here's the thing. The wallpaper paste does not agree with the contact paper. Didn't stick, it just came right off. If you guys remember yesterday, we used wallpaper paste on half of the panel so we could still move it around and adjust it. The adhesive works so well. Like it is stuck on that contact paper. Looks really good. So we're just gonna try and use adhesive on the top of the panels and see if that works. I'm a little bit worried that there's gonna be gaps in the wallpaper. You can see it's like kind of shriveled. Anyways, this is the reality of DIY. You just have to like try things, try again. I'm just glad that my team and I love the challenge because it would really suck if we did it. <laughs> So as I suspected, there are gaps between the panels that we just can't, we can't shimmy it anymore because it's really stuck down here. Lesson learned, adhesive was the way to go from the get-go, though I'm thinking about it and I'm like, do this method with caution because it's not gonna have as much give as like wallpaper paste does. So I am going to just cut the wallpaper in half. So it's like a half kind of accent wall. Maybe get a piece of trim or like add a shelf or something. So it like separates it, it makes it look clean. Tip for everyone. Do not pull contact paper or peel and stick wallpaper off your wall without heating it up first with a hairdryer or using a heat gun. We're just gonna pull the paint off your wall and you don't wanna do that. I am going to start decorating the living room. So we're gonna open the rug together. Ooh, oh my gosh, this is beautiful. <gasps> beautiful! It's so bright, so colorful, like James. It's time to bring in the most gorgeous sofa you've ever seen. And fun fact, you've seen this sofa before. I wanted to give James a little piece of Team AG and I thought, what better way than our gold sofa that I'm currently sitting on from Article. I know so many of you guys ask where this sofa is from. Now you know. We are getting him the smaller version. It also comes in the sectional. Such a beautiful sofa. It's the best color ever. This is the same TV I have at my house, and the thing I love about it is that it uses just one cord and a, one box. We asked Graham to make a custom box. He just made it out of wood, and we're gonna mount it here so that everything is nice and hidden. Also, James left me the amazing task of taking off the plastic. Are you ready? Nice, right? For the Frame TV box, Graham made this custom hidden box situation. The box really is meant to be tucked away or hidden. You don't need to access it, so it's great. We are using cord covers to cover the cords, so now the TV really does look like it's just floating on the wall. Next, we are moving on to the gallery wall and hanging up all of that beautiful art James has collected over the years. There is no rhyme or reason to this gallery wall. We're just throwing stuff up there. The great thing is we're using command Velcro strips. This not only makes it renter friendly, but easy to move pieces around as you're setting up your gallery wall. I also tried to add variation by mixing small, medium, and large art prints together in little clusters. This is what's gonna make it feel really eclectic and keep your eye kind of moving through the whole gallery wall. 
If you're looking for a video dedicated to how to style different gallery walls, like boho, farmhouse, eclectic, modern, I actually have a video dedicated to that, which I will link up here. Look at this print. You, you can, can see my light. See my light. You can see my light. See my light. To put Guava Lumiere. Guava Lumiere. <laughs> The finishing art piece we are hanging up here is actually a piece that is available to purchase on my website, alexandragator.com, a custom. You can see my light art print. I've enlisted local artists to make custom pieces that are just exclusive to alexandragator.com. You can buy these pieces download them and then have them printed into basically any size you want. You guys know I talk a lot about downloadable art pieces. I find it's just like such an accessible way to buy unique pieces and the awesome thing about my digital art marketplace is that all of these artists are Alexandra Gator approved. They're all artists I know, I love. So you're not only supporting local artists but you're also getting art at a really affordable cost. And if you wanna get your hands on it, you can see my light art print click the link down below. We're slowly building this marketplace up. So if you wanna be notified when we release a new print, make sure you are signed up for my newsletter. You can do that by going to alexandragator.com. Okay, moving on to the dining room area. I am unloading all of James's records and putting them in one place. I thought this little hutch would be just the perfect place to put his records. He had space to grow his collection and now they're just like out in the open, all in one place. If any of you know James or follow James on social media, he is a huge book lover and this is where he keeps all his books. And I feel like they should not be hidden away behind these doors. Even though these doors are so beautiful, we can just easily take them off the hinges. There's literally three screws per hinge. And then suddenly this becomes open storage. I just feel like it's nice to be able for him to see his books. It's a conversation starter when he has people over. I like love nosing around in people's bookshelves. And James has like, immaculate book taste. So I feel like these should all be out on display. So we're gonna take off the doors. James has a lot of closets in this apartment. I'm actually really jealous of all his storage space. So we're just going to pop them into the closet that's in the living room. And if he wants to put them back on, he can in like two seconds with a screwdriver. You don't even need a drill. Doesn't that just make you happy, Carla? With the doors open? Really? Right? They need to come off. Let's get them off. Little tip for you guys, if you're taking off cabinet doors or like things with hardware in your rental, keep everything in a Ziploc bag and label the Ziploc bag. Tape it to the door, cabinet, whatever. That way, when you move out, you just know where everything is and the hardware is with the piece. Next, I'm moving his desk into this little nook. I always find when I go into a space, if someone needs an at-home office, even if it's an open concept space, I always try to find a little nook or a little indent in the wall. It just makes it feel separate. Adding an accent wall with wallpaper like we did here, even if it's a half accent wall, is also a great way to visually divide the space. Remember, we came up with a solve for the accent wall. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. So we painted it the same green as the console table. I think this looks awesome. I think it looks like we kind of wainscoted <laughs> the space. Obviously, it would have been amazing to carry the wallpaper up, but I think this is a really, really good solve. To attach this trim, I'm just using the same adhesive that we used to stick the wallpaper on the contact paper. Like, how cool does that look, though? So I'm moving James's record player. <laughs> this is the coolest thing, but there's a plug coming out of the floor. So we can plug it in. And then the next thing we're gonna do is hang hooks up here. They're for storage. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I wanted to kind of create like an art piece on the wall, but also create a space for functional storage. I'm doing this with decorative hooks on the wall. These are from Indigo, from their Wii collection. Wee oui, wee! Oui. I'm hanging the folding chairs on two of the hooks. James could use the remaining hooks for storage for other things, but I don't know, I think it's really cool and like really leans into that maximalist style while also adding lots of function. Now it's time to finish that mirror DIY. So now that the frame is dry, we are adding construction adhesive onto the mirror. This was so nerve wracking. Graham and I were like, we only have one chance to get this right. We're also using quick dry super glue just to keep everything in place while the construction adhesive dries. 
Looks incredible. Yeah, it really does. And then it reflects the books, like wow. And the chandelier. Now I'm bringing that gorgeous coffee table in. To attach the glass to the top, we are using these little rubber bumpers. These are mostly used for the insides of cabinets. I'm just placing a couple of these on the legs of the table, bringing in the glass, and we have this gorgeous custom coffee table. If you can believe it, this coffee table cost us under $20 to make. We thrifted the glass, the wood was scrap wood that Graham literally found on the side of the road. He is a thrifty queen. And this looks like it could sell for hundreds of dollars. Graham is an MVP in this episode. Yes, I hope you heard that in the mic. Graham is an MVP in this episode. We were all MVPs in this episode. These two windows let in so much light, but they also look directly out to the shared garden area. I was thinking about it, I'm like, okay, I definitely don't wanna add blinds or curtains because that would be doing a disservice to these windows to be covering them up. So then I thought, why don't we add some window film onto the bottom portion of the windows? but make it rainbow. So this film is from Amazon, really inexpensive, super easy to install with water and an X-Acto knife. This film specifically is going to cast rainbows on James's wall when it's sunny. I'm so excited about it. So adds privacy, adds decoration, what's better? Next, I'm bringing in this gorgeous dining table. This is gonna be so weird, but when we placed this dining table, I was like, this is kind of my favorite part of this video because you would have never guessed you could have a dining table that seats up to four to six people in this space. And sometimes you just have to move things around, try different configurations to really get the flow of your space right. To me, this space feels 10 times bigger than when we walked in. Adding some ambient light with this gorgeous floor lamp that just finishes this space off. This light is from Satulite because everyone needs this curvy beauty in their living room. We are hanging a couple more pieces of art and then moving into finishing touches. The key to styling a maximalist space is putting things in clusters, putting things in groups, playing with color, playing with pattern, and just kind of like throwing it all out there. I'm placing candles, vases, some beautiful pink pompous grass, trinkets, and of course, this hilarious Meryl Streep candle. James wouldn't find it hilarious. He probably loves this candle. For the dining table, I'm adding two coffee table books, this really cool ceramic skull James already had. So many fun cushions on this sofa, really mixing patterns, but keeping it within the same color scheme. Okay, this was a full on makeover. I don't know how we pulled it off, to be honest. <laughs> we did this in two very full days. We are exhausted, we are tired, we are missing our cats at home, but so excited to reveal the space to James. Let's bring him in. Close your eyes. Close your, Close your eyes. eyes. <laughs> we are just like so thrilled that we got to come all the way to Montreal and oh do this for you and surprise you. We miss you so much. Uh, but can you walk me through what the living room looked like before? Oh, it was a lot of like mismatched kind of random inherited furniture. Mm -hmm. Nothing looked particularly put together or intentional. You also asked us to make this a living room, mm -hmm. a dining room, mm -hmm. an office space. Mm -hmm. You asked for it all basically and I was like, I'm sorry, what? On the count of three, I want you to open your eyes, oh, okay? No. okay? One, oh my God. two, three. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Holy <laughs> Oh my God. I 
This is insane. This is incredible. <laughs> Oh! Oh my God! Is that gonna be available on AlexandraVader.com? Sure is. <laughs> Link down below. <laughs> what? How did you do this? I feel like just completely like mind blasted. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm so glad you like it. Oh. 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 This video was so fun. Make sure you hit that subscribe button to see more videos like this. We actually may be taking another trip very soon to make over a very special couple in New York City. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. And as always, I will see you guys next time. Team AG signing off. Bye. Bye. <laughs> That's so cute. Oh, so cute.